Hello all and welcome to this new lecture in the series of Mathematics for Machine Learning. Today we are going to discuss about Eigen decomposition and I understand that a lot of you may not be aware of this term so let me simplify this for you as soon as possible. So Eigen decomposition is nothing but a method of decomposing a given matrix into eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So let's go by the theory pointers one by one. It says Eigen decomposition of a matrix into eigenvectors and eigenvalues eigenvalues reveals characteristics of a matrix and soon we will try to understand that what kind of characteristics actually we get to know after decomposing a matrix and the eigen decomposition for given matrix A will be denoted by this symbol and let me give you a proper breakdown for this one so the first symbol V is nothing but the concatenation of all the eigenvectors for the given matrix so let's say that you have a matrix A which has four elements so it is A1, A2, A3 and A4 and let's say that you are calculating the eigenvector for this matrix which comes out to be V1, V2, V3 and V4 so this concatenation of these two eigenvectors is actually what is denoted over here. The second symbol which looks like a lambda is a diagonal matrix with all eigenvalues diagonally in descending order. So let's say for this given matrix only, matrix A, when we are calculating the eigenvalue, then it comes out to be 3 and 5. In that case, lambda will be a diagonal matrix that will have these two values diagonally in descending order. So first we will have 5 and then we will have 3 and other elements will be zero of course as per the definition of a diagonal matrix and that is it and this is what actually it is represented here in this symbol the last element which is v inverse it is nothing but the calculated inverse for this given matrix which is nothing but the concatenation of all the eigenvectors and you need to keep in mind that the eigen decomposition is applicable only for square matrices so the number of rows and columns has to be equal and before we move towards the further pointers let's try to have a practical demo for whatever we have learned so far so i will quickly jump into my jupyter notebook and here i'm creating a matrix a which has these four elements and again i'm using this function that we are already familiar with in order to compose the eigenvalue and eigenvector and these are the eigenvalues as you can see which is representing the first element of the eigen decomposition and since we have already calculated it let's also quickly calculate the inverse for it so in the following cell i am also calculating the inverse for the eigenvector which comes out to be this values and lastly we need this element which is nothing but a diagonal matrix having the eigenvalues diagonally in descending order so we already have the eigenvalues calculated here and all we need to do is use this np.diag function which will create a diagonal matrix for us in descending order for the diagonal elements. And as per this equation that we have studied so far, if we multiply all these three elements, then it should be equivalent to the matrix A. So all I'm going to do is, I'm going to multiply the eigenvector, the inverse of eigenvector, and the diagonal matrix which contains the eigenvalues diagonally. And after multiplying all these three, we should get this matrix in order to satisfy this equation. So if I drag down to the following cell, I'm using this following function in order to multiply the eigenvector, eigenvalue and the inverse of eigenvector. And the output comes out to be exactly as the values of the matrix A that we have here. And that is all about the concept of eigen decomposition. Now another thing which you need to understand is eigen decomposition cannot be calculated for all types of matrices and also in some cases where the eigen decomposition can be calculated it involves very complicated numbers very complex numbers like in fraction or exponential numbers however in machine learning most of the times we are dealing with symmetric matrices and when we try to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for a symmetric matrix we get real numbers in the output and therefore the eigen decomposition of a symmetric matrix is represented in this form and let me give you a quick breakdown for this so here q is equivalent to v which is nothing but the concatenation of all the eigenvectors however 
it is special because q is an orthogonal matrix and by the way i am assuming that you are already familiar with the concept of orthogonal matrix or symmetric matrices if not then do consider checking out the respective lectures within this playlist only moving on and when we calculate the eigen decomposition for a symmetric matrix in this form then it then it can be simply decomposed into real values within our eigen vectors and eigen values so we will have a quick example for that as well so as we have studied real symmetric matrices can be efficiently decomposed into real eigen vectors and real eigen values and this decomposition is represented by this one so let me take an example of a symmetric matrix a and as you can understand by these elements if you try to calculate the transpose there will be no change in the output it will be equivalent to the original matrix itself and again i am using this function from the numpy library in order to get the decomposition of the matrix a into lambdas and q so lambdas is the eigen values and q is the concatenation of the eigen vectors as we check the values of lambdas we get these real numbers and then we create this diagonal matrix out of it and here we have the values for all the eigen vectors and with the calculated values above now let's try to prove this equation so ideally if we multiply the eigen vector eigen values and the transpose of eigen vectors it should be equivalent to our original matrix a so i am doing the multiplication here and you can see the output is exactly the same as our original matrix a and since we have studied earlier that q is an orthogonal matrix which means it should hold a property of giving an identity matrix as an output when it is multiplied by its transpose version so when we try to multiply q with q transpose we get this identity matrix and by the way these two values if you are confused then let me tell you that these are extremely extremely close to zero as you can see it is exponential minus 17 which makes it extremely close to zero and we can do the multiplication vice versa and again we will get an identity matrix and that is it for today's lecture i hope that you were able to understand the concept of an eigen decomposition which is a very important topic in the field of machine learning and advanced analytics please consider dropping a like below if you are finding this playlist helpful and subscribe to the channel to support our work i will see you in the next lecture